Hey guys, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know who this is, I don't need to say anything else, but I will tell you I'm so glad to do this again, I am glad I got enough time, and especially on a really gloomy day outside, yeah, it was raining earlier, but yes, I am here to pretty much like finish up most of my collection, mostly for the engines this time, and for those of you who are going to ask, will I um, do the rolling stock soon? Well, if you guys remember when I did that video with, you know, last year with the Bachman Henry pulling pretty much every rolling stock I own, I will tell you this. The answer will definitely be a big no. I guess maybe for, I guess for the most part, I, well, I was mostly going to do the rolling stock, you know, the, the living ones, you know, like Annie, Clarabelle, Henrietta, Toad, you know, but... I decided that for now, we'll just do the engines. Oh, I will do the non-rolling stock, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm probably going to do them in this part of the video. But yeah, we're going to continue where we last left off right now by reviewing the next set of twins that I have alongside Donald and Douglas, Bill and Ben. And just like when I used Donald for the example, here I'm going to use Bill for this example. And I gotta say, these models... I remember I wanted these models so badly when I started collecting Bachman Thomas models. And, boy, these two are so impressive. And I gotta say, they're a lot better than Hornby's version of the twins. Because I remember seeing, like, Samursky's review back in 2011. Yeah, Hornby, Bill, and Ben, they're, like, really, really big. And too identical that you can't even tell who's Bill and who's Ben, because they have the same faces, but here, like, they change that. Like, for the most part, everything on uh, on either Bill or Ben is exactly the same, <laughs> and that's good. Like, because Donald and Douglas are, you know, they're kind of like fraternal twins. At least you can recognize them, but Bill and Ben, on the other hand, they're so identical, you have a hard time telling who's who. And I admit, I really prefer, you know, if they didn't have numbers like they did in, well, the books. I'm just saying. Alright, so yeah, everything, I really love the shade of yellow, as golden yellow is my favorite shade of yellow. <laughs> Though my favorite color is actually blue, but alright. Yeah, I really love the shade of yellow that was used on the twins, especially on the Sodor China Clay logo, where you can actually see it from a distance. So yeah, they have, you know, a nice... Well, Bill and Ben have, the, you know, the regular golden mustardy kind of yellow. It's just a regular kind of yellow on, you know, for their logo, the China Clay one. And I really love, like, how they got on each of them. The top with the short stumpy funnel and the two domes. I think this is the steam dome, and I think that's the fillet cap. Yeah, um, I also love the colo here. The back looks really detailed. I... I will say, I really love how small and compact these two are, just to get their actual size from the series. And I really do enjoy Bill and Ben as characters. Well, unlike how in the Andrew Renner, while they were enjoyable for now, they just started becoming just, like, really obnoxious these days now. But yes, like, I really do like the detail that were added on the twins. Like, of course, like, well, with Toby... They have, like, the gaping hole in their buffer beam, but it's because of these details, I tend to overlook that, because they look amazing, especially when you run these two alongside together. We got all the other details and molds. Hell, the only differences in telling Bill and Ben apart are, well, oh, for, before that, we'll just get to, it's not this, the China Clay logo, we also got, uh, if the camera can focus in on this, oh, sorry guys, I, I hate it when the camera takes this long. But yeah, if you could read right here, it would should say Brendan Bay. Yeah, as you probably know. I think the alignment on, you know, the Brendan Bay is good, as well as the fact that they got the right font for it and it's readable. Like, and everything else, like, that also makes the twins stand out is, of course, well, well, of course, we also got the other differences. The nameplates are the right, you know, font. Like, I like the, you know, the font for the nameplates. Um,. Yeah, you can see Brendan Bay right here. And, of course, the other big differences in telling them apart is Bill has this regular... Yeah, I really like Bill's face the most. Like, it, how it's just got this regular cheerful, you know, smile, but still, you know, mischievous ball. Ben, on the other hand, has a really more mischievous smile than Bill. 
and I really like how they got that. Like, it's the right faces, that's for sure. Here's the top. I really like how they placed the whistle here, but the only difference, though, is Bill's model has this connecting, like, pipe towards it. Like, seriously, it's cool and all, but the only problem, on the other hand, I'll show you right now, Ben doesn't have this. I, yeah, like, why is it that Bill does, but Ben doesn't? Like, at least just to make it everything a little more interesting, but... And I know that you're, they're trying to differentiate the twins, but... Yeah, it just doesn't really help that much. Sorry. So, yeah, overall, these are really, really good models of the twins, and very good depictions... Well, yeah, these are very good depictions of them. That's what I was going to try and say. <laughs> i got to get my speech right. But, yeah, now that we've gotten Bill and Ben out of the way, now we're going to move on to some diesels along the way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Just had to check on something. And, yeah, so here we are with now, along with Edward Donald Douglas, my other favorite model, Devious Diesel. <laughs> yeah. Say what you will about the grumpy diesel end, as well as the face, sorry, the face, because this was at the time when we were all complaining about the CGI series, and, but was also not as great as, like, well, the face, well, for starters, it's definitely not the right expression for the character of Diesel. Hell, it, I mean, you could modify this, I guess, but with the bop and grumpy diesel, it begs the question... Is anyone ever going to buy that? Ugh, oh boy. But you can overlook that because the rest of the model of Diesel, not look, excuse me, it not only looks accurate to the series, but also to an actual Class 08 in general. Everything looks great. Seriously, the vents, the black livery, the fillet cap, the, like, the, like sorry, the engine, like the machinery parts and such, or the radiators, um, the door, um, yeah, all these molds on the top of his roof, um, we even got the step ladders, that looks nice, like seriously, Diesel is just a really nice model overall, I mean, at least they got the nose right on his face, <laughs> we got the buffer beam, his side rods really stand out to me too, well, for one, I really like how it's an outside frame wheel set, you know, like an actual Class 08 shunter. Like, as you can see here, it's connected to this little bolt, and, well, when it's running, these side rods will, will pretty much do their thing when, you know, when the model's running. Okay. But what I really love is, while the rest of this model is black, I really love how they did keep these silver side rods like he did from Seasons 2 and 3, just, you know, to keep up with the classic series, and I really like that. I just feel like it helps to make Diesel stand out a little bit more. So, yeah, say what you will about the face, or, hell, even the grumpy Diesel model, which, I don't know. I mean, they should have called it, oh, I don't know, Devious Diesel? Still, like I said, I said it before, I'll say it again. Bachman, you've really let us down. Alright, but on the other hand, let's just, you know, wrap this up. Because, honestly, I've said a lot about Bachman Diesel that I haven't in the past, so he's definitely a very recommended model. Yeah, I'm going to say that I recommend most of the Bachman models in this range, am I? <laughs> Moving on. Now, here we are with the feisty young Mavis. Yeah, <laughs> my favorite female, you know, engine in the series, and... I really do like what they did for Mavis, and I could definitely overlook the gaping hole, as I was going to point out. Yeah, but I really wish they would have fixed it. But nonetheless, Mavis' model, for the most part, is pretty good. Like, though I don't know, I mean, the eyebrows on this, she looks so mischievous. I know she's supposed to be, like, feisty and all that, but she looks so evil right now with those eyebrows. Like, really? The hazard stripes, I gotta say, I give them credit for their alignment and, you know, the pattern of the colors. I also like how they got the vents on this side, her funnel, the lamp irons, the cab. Yeah, um, you know what, I got nothing against the silver, you know, because I can understand why they used it. Um, of course, we got her name and the far sorry, the Fafarquhar Company Limited, which, of course, is perfectly aligned, and I like the, how the white stands out. And it's in the correct font. 
We also got a really good pattern and rhythm of the hazard, excuse me, hazard stripes on the back, as well as these little lamp irons. Like, yeah, she's got a gaping hole, but on the other hand, this model of Mavis is really, really good. Hell, it's the only HO slash 00 model of Mavis that you'll ever get. So, this is it. And while I'm on that subject, here we are with the C-savvy, scurvy, salty diesel himself. Alright, I'm back. Just needed some quiet for a bit. But, yeah. So, yeah, here's Salty, and I still have fond memories of the very day when I first got this. At... And I gotta tell you, his model, for the most part, looks really good. Though, uh, it's not to say that he has some faults, though. Like, he's got the right face. Like, the face is the right one. I and mean, hell, he's even got, you know, the buck teeth. See, the buck teeth. And I love how we got this, you know, mold here to make it look like he's wearing a skipper's hat. The hazard stripes are the right alignment and the right, you know, shade of red. Hell, he's also got a really nice shade of red overall. We got his name, Salty, and we got his number, 2991. And we got the gray funnel right here. His horn, the the handrails are really, really nice, and I love how they designed the buffer beam, even though it's got, well, that gaping hole, like I said. But really, what, you know, bothers, oh yeah, there's the step ladders in the right places, too, and I really like how the side rods were modeled on Salty, but the only problem I will say right now is, I know Bachman, you know, really weathers these, and doesn't weather the engines, just makes them all shiny, and it's great for the others, but I really wish they could have at least just added some texture on Salty, you know, because in the actual series, he actually has, like, rust and oil stains, you know, just to, because he's a hard-working old diesel that works at the docks, me hearties. <laughs> but, yes, I mean, it's a good model, but I really wish they could have added some detail. And then here we have the greenish girl herself, Emily, and I gotta say, Emily's model looks also very nice, but not to say that she doesn't have too many faults, but not in detail, but mostly the power. To be honest, I really wish Bachman did, you know, give her the brass buffers instead of the silver ones, but everything else, like, she's got the right face, the funnel looks good, I'm really impressed in how this driving wheel is, sorry, how this leading wheel is connected with the driving wheel whenever you run her. Like, hell, the driving wheel, for the most part, is in the right height. It, it just wouldn't be Emily if she didn't have, well, that really big driving wheel. And we also got the uh, right alignment and, you know, the exact colors that Emily herself has. Heck, as far as I'm concerned, she'd probably be the only HO slash 00 model that we have of a Sterling single. Hmm. Yeah, she doesn't really have that much cab detail, though, and I... Wish, like, with Donald and Douglas, you know, we had, you know, ho holes in the cab, you know, windows. Like, I do like her safety valve, on the other hand. It's the definitely, like, I really, it's the right height, and I, and again, the brass really stands out, especially on top here. And especially the edge of her funnel, chocolate running boards. And here's the tender. The only problem I have is the, I, like, she's just so tall that... Coupling the tender on can be a real pain in the ass. Hell, the worst part of it all, I do remember, there is a flange in the tender wheels. I can't remember which one, but there was that. We also have the right shapes and, you know, alignment of the tender. Water fill it cap, the coal load. I could definitely, you know, get these buffers to look brass someday, but... Like, while I admit, she's a really good model for the most part and very stunning... The only downside, I gotta say, is just, she's not very powerful. I mean, the, probably the only thing you'll have her pull are her two coaches, and that's it. And only just a few trucks, but yeah, she's really not that strong, and sometimes she's struggling when pulling trains on my layout. But nonetheless, though, she's really good. Hell, definitely a hell lot better than the Hornby model, which honestly looks nothing like Emily whatsoever. Then again, it's not like I don't, it's not like Hornby's ever did, you know, a Sterling single in the range. But yeah, now that we've gotten Emily out of the way, 
Here, of course, were the last models I've gotten for now, Ari and Bert. Yeah, <laughs> the other 08s I have, and of course they have made Paxton. Um, so yeah, here are Bert and Ari. Um, damn, it's so hard to tell who's who. But I do remember Ari had this uh, scratch. Uh, well, I guess I'll just use Ari for the example. So yeah, I really the detail on them. Well, like Salty, I wish they could have added some detail some weathering detail like you know rust and all that but nonetheless it re they look really good for the most part well i mean they got the right you know colors and you know such you know with you know, most of the vents you know and like radiators and grills well being yellow and the filler cap too and the cabs while they the rest of the bodywork is mostly in like this um olive green i love you know the alignment on their like, they're, well, sorry. Oh, yeah, the hazard stripes. That's really, really good. Just kind of like, you know, actual BR diesels. Heck, I, I almost forgot to bring this up with diesel, too. The electric lighting arrangement is, excuse me, lighting arrangement is really good. They even got the outside frame wheel sets like the other 08s, like diesel or Paxton. As well as a good uh, alignment and, well, the correct font for the Sodor Ironworks logo. But the only problem, like with Diesel, Ari and Bert, you know, aren't really, you know, grinning deviously. And, you know, because Ari and Bert are, after all, the grim messengers of doom, so it really doesn't make sense. Hell, another problem, I really have a hard time with telling who's Ari and who's Bert apart from each other. Because if I remember, Bert has more stubble, I, I think. Let me just look. Yeah, because as far as I'm concerned, this should be Bert. Yeah, and this may be a little distracting, but I really wish just... Like, I can understand why Mavis and Diesel had silver cab windows, but hell, even but for the two, the Ironworks twins, hell... Even Salty, I really wish they painted the cab windows black. It just, just to make him stand out more. Just, it looks so awkward with silver cab windows. But they're still pretty good for the most part. I mean, like last time I checked with the Hornby Aryan bird, they pretty much had the same faces as Splatter and Dodge. Because, if I'm not mistaken, weren't Hornby going to make Splatter and Dodge, but decided to repaint him to Aryan Burt because... Well, the movie Thomas and the Magic Railroad, that piece of crap, well, didn't do very well. Which is also kind of contrasting to, sorry, which is also true, sorry, true in real life for the actual Ari and Burt models. Which, well, for those of you who don't know, well, we're Splatter and Dodge. <laughs> Alright, we got 18 minutes. Um, you know what? Actually, I think I... Because this was going to be just for the engines, we'll do the non-rail characters and the rolling stock in their own video for, you know, some other time. Then we'll end it off with, pretty much, by making things interesting, with showcasing every model that I collected in, you know, in a specific order. But we'll get to that some other time, because right now I just got to think about that. I hope you all have a good day. Take care, everyone. Oh. And before you ask um, why I didn't include the Boko and Daisy customs, well, they're just a bunch of crappy customs I have. They don't really count. All right. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye.